this series of videos I'm attempting to repair and restore this Osborne OCC1 vintage computer. So far in this series I've carried out a number of repairs. I went through the power supply, had some issues with the RAM, issues with one of the floppy drives. I refurbished the floppy drives, cleaned up the entire machine, at least the internal uh, workings of it so far. But I was having a continuing problem with the keyboard and uh, basically the, some of the keys were uh, reading as stuck down all the time. I checked the electronics for the interface and that was fine but the problem turned out to be the keyboard itself and I spent quite some time uh, messing about trying to get it to work and I was going through finding one key that wouldn't work I got that uh, working then there was another key then another and um, eventually I, I gave up on the idea of trying to um, get a simple fix in place that was going to make it reliable. I had to come up with something longer term. Now I had expected to, to have to scrap the keyboard and I still may have to but for a bit of fun what I decided to do was try and figure out why the keyboard was so unreliable. It's one of the main reasons I do um, these repairs. It's not just to end up with a working machine, it's because I enjoy the puzzle and I enjoy trying to figure out how to get the things to work and also um, why they failed in the first place. Now in this case I believe that it's down to the, de the design of the keyboard itself, especially the internal design of the uh, key panel. And in the previous video I took the key panel apart and um, made a modification to it. I basically reduced the size of the opening through which the keys are operated. That's the spacer uh, layer in the key uh, membrane panel. And the idea was to increase the amount of force required to uh, press the key in effect and that also means that they are more reliable in opening and that seemed to be the issue the, um, as the keyboards aged and with a lot of corrosion in it um, it just wasn't uh, working properly the keys were closing but then not opening again and it was causing all sorts of uh, weird problems so I took the uh, one of the layers off the membrane panel put some spaces in to change the size of the opening in the separator layer. I've reassembled it as you can see and I've taken it off the alignment jig that I use now and it's just plugged into the, uh, the Osborne. I fitted two of the, um, these are the plunger housings, I've, they're not held in place yet, I've just pushed them into the holes just to keep the, um, the panel in place but I have fitted the plunger for the return key and uh, the idea of doing this is I want to basically leave it running for quite a while it's been going about six hours now without any issues because it kind of worked intermittently before I could get the keys to work then they'd stop working after a few minutes and then it'd work and then it wouldn't it's been working now fine for as I say about six hours and if I press this uh, key, this is the return key you can see the machine boots, it's very reliable and if we watch the key uh, as I push it down it works at about 60% of its travel which is about the right position so um, it's working fine. Now the key force is actually higher than it was before, it's not really noticeable when you press the key down uh, but it was about 60 grams it's now about 85 grams and that is as I say because I've reduced the size of the opening and the problem now of course is if I just put the original springs back in so the way these work is you've got the plunger it's not this spring there's a small spring inside that this white plunger operates on and that small spring is what pushes the panel it's not the plunger itself the plunger never touches the panel directly um, but that spring is not now um, powerful enough, it's not stiff enough so I needed to increase the spring tension. The problem in doing that is if I just make it long, I'll grab one of the plungers so the 
the spring fits into this hole you can just see the tip of the plunger that comes up pretty much flush with the bottom edge of this this sits this way up of course um, but if I just stretch the spring to make it longer which is what I did initially to test it um, I can get the tension exactly right but the problem then is with this in its basically up position the spring protrudes about two millimeters out of the bottom of this um, assembly which we don't really want it's because otherwise it's then always pressing only a little bit but it's always pressing on the membrane top surface uh, which is possibly going to lead to unreliability and the um, switch is sticking closed again so what I need to do is increase the spring tension so as I say it's not this spring it's a small spring that sits inside we'll have a look at one in a minute uh, but I need to increase the tension on those small springs without making them longer ideally I'd like to just obviously replace the springs uh, but I don't want to have to buy several hundred custom springs could look around and uh, try and find one that exactly uh, meets the requirement but I of course have a number of springs that came out of this that I can possibly repurpose um, so we'll have a look and I'll show you how I went about doing this and getting the spring tension just right to make sure that the springs aren't always pressing on the key panel but can exert a bit more force to reliably operate the panel so I'll just move the camera so you're not going to be able to see this very clearly but the spring on the left is an original spring I haven't modified it to get it to work with the uh, modification I've made to the uh, membrane I needed to stretch it to this length so it was 9.2 millimeters I had to get it to 10.5 millimeters to get the force that I needed and I was using a an accurate scale and uh, compressing the spring to its operational length and uh, then measuring the force and it was that's how I know it was 65 grams um, to operate and um, when I got the uh, spring to the length where the keys work reliably it was about 85 to 90 grams so we'll say 90 grams and um, but as you can see it's, it's now longer and I don't want this key constantly pressing on the the panel so what you can do with springs is the stiffness is partly a function of the number of coils so for a given um, type of wire and a given spring design you can increase its stiffness by reducing the number of turns so by stretching the spring still further and then cutting the end off which is what I've done with this one uh, then what you can do is increase its stiffness so I found the correct number of turns that are required and that's the um, type of spring I now have in the switch we just looked at so it's now the same length as it was but it's just stiffer to give us the stiffness of the stretched version so both of these will work the difference is the one on the right is shorter so it won't be pressing on the panel all the time so hope that made sense um, the next question is how to um, hold the housings this is the plunger housing back in place because obviously I uh, basically cut away the part of the plastic that was holding them in so I've just made a couple of sketches I'll just move the camera again so this is what we started with and this is looking effectively at the underside of this so where these tabs protruded through the aluminium plate they were mushroomed over to rivet them in place so as a cross section it looked like this so this is the plastic post and originally it would have been longer uh, than the thickness of the plate when the keyboard was manufactured this end part was heated up and basically squidged over to rivet the housing into place now I showed how I removed the uh, housings using a soldering iron to basically uh, bulldoze off this top section so what I ended up with was this and this is what we now have so if I just push these back in they'll just drop out again uh, so what I need to do is find a way to hold these in place so what I've done I've already modified the aluminium plate I didn't show it earlier 
Um, but I've countersunk from the other side, the side we're not looking at, I've countersunk all these uh, mounting holes, not very far, about a millimetre. So what I've effectively ended up with is this. So this is the aluminium plate. It's a very shallow countersink. And now, of course, the post, when we push it in, will look like this. So all I need to do now is get a conical tipped soldering iron, heat it up, push it into the end of the plastic once it's been put into the keyboard, and that will mushroom the end over into the countersink. So when it's finished, it will look like this. And of course, this will now hold itself in place. Once it's in the keyboard, it'll, the only difference is it will be flush with the aluminium plate rather than proud of it as it was originally. So as I say, I did all these countersinks when I had the plate in the workshop earlier. And um, what I can do now is just start reassembling this and fitting uh, all the plunger housings. Um, modifying the springs so they're the correct tension and then hopefully they'll all work. So hopefully by the time we get to the next video the key board will be largely reassembled. Um, it'll take a couple of hours for me to do this but it certainly beats uh, the approach I would have had to take before and hopefully we'll end up with a reliable keyboard. As I said, I'd given up on trying to make this reliable the way it was, and so I'm hoping these modifications, as long as I haven't damaged any of the membrane, I'm hoping these modifications will make this a much more reliable keyboard.